Air Force Academy, their fifth game this year. They lead Utah State 21 to 7 here in Logan. Welcome back inside the booth, Ed Cohen, with the seven year NFL veteran, Ross Tucker. Well, Air Force, they can pound it on the ground. They also normally control the time of possession. Not the case in the first half. How they take the lead? They let Hazik Daniels loose with his arm. Well, it was the Hazik Daniels show. He had the rushing touchdown at the end, but it was mainly his arm. I don't think anyone expected that coming into today, but they're showing that the Air Force can go to the air a little bit this season. Let's take a look at our first half stats. They're brought to you by Polaris. Uh, yes, Air Force. 33 more yards in the air than Utah State and Ross. They closed out their first half scoring a 99-yard scoring drive. Well, and how about look at the yards per play. 9.6 yards per play against 4.4. Obviously, that is a huge difference. Air Force, it's been a challenging year. Two games canceled because of COVID-19 against Wyoming and Colorado State. Last week, they played just one game in November. 21-7 advantage. They'll take on Army, a rescheduled game at West Point on December 19th. And away we go. Third quarter, the Canyons firing. And a fair catch taken at the five-yard line by Josh Stoner. And has seen Daniels will go back to work here for Air Force. Well, and early on, it was his arm, and he was on point to Morris. That was an unbelievable throw there to King. And then he had... Deep down the seam to Peterson, who's usually the blocking wing back. I love Peterson. And then at the end of the half, Daniels letting those legs do the work. Very impressive by the sophomore from Franklin, New Jersey. St. John Vianney, Jersey Shore area. This to Rimsburg and his return from injury out across the 35 yard line. It's knocked out of bounds. And Kenninger among those on the tackle. For Utah State, there's a flag on the play. Rimsburg's made a big difference. Haven't gone as much to Roberts and Merla. They were the top two options on the ground a couple of weeks ago against New Mexico. And now we'll get the call from Mike Catone. Personal foul, chop block, number 56 and 64 of the offense. He'll only be enforced half the distance to the goal. Still first down. That's yes, Britton Beasley and Kyle Kreps. All right, let's look at 56 and 64. So I think it's going to be the center and the right guard. Let's see what happens here. Watch the backside. Kreps goes through. Income. Yeah, that's a bad call because when you are adjacent offensive lineman like that and you're going towards the play, that's not a chop block. That's not a high low right there when you're adjacent offensive lineman like that. So unless I'm missing something, I think that's a bad call. You're allowed to cut on the back side even if the defensive lineman is engaged with the center as long as you are adjacent lineman working together in the direction of the play. So the way I understand the rule, I think the officials might have gotten that one wrong. Let's see what Daniels can do. On the air, over the middle, catch made across the 45-yard line. And what a catch it was, Jake Spiewak. Well, they take care of business after the calls. But hold on a second. There's some yellow on the field. Another flag after the big catch by Spiewak. Pass interference, number 81 of the offense. 15, that penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Yeah, Dalton King. It's not even who they threw the ball to. I wonder if King had some type of rub down the field to get Spreewack free. King is running out there. Yeah, right in the middle right there. He engaged in the contact there. Boy, you don't see that called very often either. And Daniels took a hit from Vong Chapon. But King, ooh, Daniels, something's bothered him a little bit after that. Getting the range of motion. Stays oh, in there, fumbles a snap, and just holds onto it on his knees. Could have been way worse. Penalty, penalty, fumbled snap. It's a bad start. They got a new center in there. Remember, they got Beasley in there instead of Noyan. Watch. He, he was short. 
I think the center was a little bit short at first glance there, getting the ball up. Beasley, not your typical Air Force offensive lineman. 6'1", 330. Rimsburg is bunched up, brought down past the 15-yard line. Now, Ross, we talked about it at the beginning. No Adam Jewell at the right tackle spot for Air Force. So they've shuffled their offensive line here tonight. Yeah, but watch, watch Peterson right here. I love this dude. Okay, watch him on the edge. He's responsible for the pitch man. Releases out. Watch the puck. He always has the right angle. Hands inside. Ryan, finish, 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 finish. That guy is awesome. Peterson's awesome. I mean, he's 5'9", a bucket. Look at this. Boom. That is perfect. Daniels in trouble, and down he goes. Sacked by Justice Tate. It was 3rd and 18. Instead, punting in it on for Air Force. A tough start to this third quarter for the Falcons. And this is exactly Tate was able to run right over Laufenberg, or actually Beasley, the center, exactly what Utah State needed to start this half. You get a big stop, three and out, push them back. They should get terrific field position. On airborne from Carlson. This is Nathan avoids one tackle and bumped out of bounds. How about Air Force? Second sack they've allowed all season was second best in the country by Utah State with the pressure. Down goes Daniels. Aggies with it coming back. Utah State with the football early in this third quarter. Ed Cohen, Ross Tucker with you. Air Force up 21 to 7. They got a playoff while we were in commercial. So second and 10 here for the Aggies. At their own 49. And Paisley slinging it out. McGriff is top target. The big fella makes the grab to the 38 yard line. Flag on the play though. I think this is coming back. I think it's going to be a hold. Holding number 72 the offense 10 yard penalty replay second down Alfred Edwards the left tackle. Yep Edwards 6 7 3 15 take a look at the left tackle right there. We'll see who he's going against Sylvanic. Ooh, Sylvanic with a nice hump move and yeah he had that left hand outside a little bit. I, I can't get over Sylvanic. I mean. The guy was playing offensive line until <laughs> like 10 days before the Navy game, and he just wreaks havoc in the backfield. Came in with four tackles for loss, couple of sacks. Peasley airs it out. This is deep. Almost intercepted. Would have been the second for Damani Hansford. Couldn't hold. Well, they got to take advantage of this now, right? I mean, they were going to have fourth and nine. They were going to punt it away, but now. They got new life. They've got to score. They got to score a touchdown. Donaldson, of course, can stay on the sideline. That's a new thing this year, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, allow the kids to be out there with their teammates, even if they can't be on the field. And I got to think on some level, he's thinking about that Army game as well. Third quarter last week against New Mexico. Opened the door for Utah State. Off the play fake, Peasley to the outside. Off the hands and incomplete. Looking for his big target, Justin McGriff. Third down here for Utah State. Last week, they scored 28 unanswered points in a little over seven minutes. Three touchdowns and a scoop and score for the Aggies. So here's the deal, too, Ed. At the 35-yard line, this could very easily be four-down territory because Frank Miley said he would try a field goal in end-of-half or end-of-game situation at 35. This is neither. So they could very easily run some type of draw or quarterback draw here to try to split the difference if they want. Action on third down. Paisley chased, throws complete. It's McGriff this time coming across the middle, but not enough for the first down. And here's the big decision for Frank Miley. Fourth and four coming up for the 29. I don't think it's a very big decision in the sense that he's got to go. I mean, you're down two touchdowns. You haven't done a great job stopping Air Force in this game. 
I don't think a 47 yard field goal obviously is no gimme doesn't do a whole lot for you so they've had success doing two things Beasley's legs and the shallow crossing route that they ran right there he's got Akakona the running back keeps it Beasley incomplete uh, really not even close good coverage downfield Beasley taking the worst of it after the play and Air Force will take over on the turnover and downs there was nobody open I mean Beasley still could have given it a better shot right there but there really was nobody open as the Air Force defense picks up their buddy Grant Donaldson and gets off the field College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by ServPro's Proactive Cleaning Program. Certified ServPro Clean, a higher standard of clean for your business. By USAA, proud supporter of the military community. What you're made of, we're made for. And by The Exchange, welcoming home veterans to their exchange shopping benefits. This was a scene in Colorado Springs, October 3rd, Air Force over Navy. 40-7 to seven wearing their Legacy Series uniforms honoring the Tuskegee Airmen. And the race for the Commander's Chief Trophy continued West Point on December 19th Army and Air Force. Handoff here goes to Kadem Rimsburg in his return to the backfield. Well, what a boost he has been getting back in the lineup for Air Force. He's only got a couple games left in his career. He's got to feel great to get back out there and continue to go up the record books. And he's having a big night because Utah State has not had a lot of success defending the pitch. Injured his leg against San Jose State earlier in the year. Picked up six, a second and four. And Daniels is for Brad Roberts. Good enough for the first down. Brought down just shy of the 45-yard line. That was Jared Reed, the junior linebacker. Now Roberts with Rimsburg back. Bit of a different role here tonight, but go back to two weeks ago against New Mexico. Career high, 177 yards. And we said this, Ross, at the top. I mean, two quarters against Navy plays a couple of weeks ago. Whole game against the Lobos, six quarters of experience coming in. From the 44, Ribsburg hops over a man and in midair, Dominic Tatum brings him down, but Ribsburg flying through the Logan Air. Uh, this is a counter play. I've seen Ribsburg do this a bunch in his career. He is so good at this. Look at that. That's a beautiful hurdle technique there, but he didn't get smashed. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it looks awesome for me, but I'm not the one that's getting smashed while I'm in the air right there. Boom. Tatum. But I've seen Remsburg do that, Ed, and stick it and land it and keep running. He's like, a, he's like a rabbit in the open field. Yeah, it's funny. Tatum didn't play the first half because he was penalized for targeting against New Mexico last game. Roberts is slowed up by the linebacker Nevis. And all of a sudden you're Tatum. This guy is coming at you after hurdling your teammate. What do you do? You, you try to bring him down and he does with a big hit. I wouldn't expect Air Force to go to the air that much more. You know they've got a two touchdown lead. I know they've had a lot of success with it but I think they'd love nothing more than a long clock eating Grind it drive to go up by three scores right here. Top rushing team in the country. First and ten now. <laughs> so much for that. Daniels, he was looking deep, double coverage, and overcooks it. No chance that time for Seth Meter, the freshman for Air Force. Yeah, that's a poor decision by Daniels. It's a good thing he threw it that far away. I think they thought they could get a big play here on first down, but credit Utah State, they were all over it. Tatum's back there, Bond, both safeties were all over Meter, the freshman. And I think Daniels really just threw that one away. Would have been a good one, by the way, for him to tuck it away and get some yards. You want to keep that clock spinning. Air Force, I think, was trying to 
give him the kill shot there with the deep post. Remember, 17 completions for Daniels coming into this game. There's a toss. Joshua Stoner able to fight through the hole down the sideline. And a first down for the senior from Columbus, Joshua Stoner. I, I don't understand who has the pitch. I mean, the end guy has quarterback. And nobody has the pitch. And they didn't fix it at halftime. I'm at a loss for this one. I mean, if it's the corner, then those guys need to play up on the line of scrimmage and they need to get off the block of the wide receiver. If it's somebody else, they got to be there. I mean, this is poor right now. You're playing an option team and you haven't really stopped the pitch guy once. I'll take a look at the previous play, which was a 22 yard gain. For Stoner, you know, we talked to Stacy Collins, co-defensive coordinator of Utah State, fifth year on the staff, and he said, at least about the triple option, and really this offense, you know, we played Air Force a bunch. There's just no answer for what they do when they throw in some wrinkles as well. That makes it really hard. It's a long week preparing for this Air Force team. I think they're going to look and see where Stoner went out of bounds. As he was tiptoeing down the sideline. But again, look, this is assignment football. And watching them, I'm not even sure who is responsible for the pitch. I can't figure it out. That left foot looked like it went out of bounds there. I don't know how many more yards they gave him. But his left foot went out about three steps earlier. Right there. So it looks like he went out of bounds from that angle. Certainly the right foot went out of bounds after that. Watch the left foot here. That's out of bounds. And then the right foot's definitely out of bounds. Now they gave him 22 yards. Maybe they shave a couple off. Even if the left one's questionable, the right one was not. They gave him the 23. It looks like it should go back to about the 28. Good job by the replay officials, by the way, seeing that. Okay, here we go. Oh, he might have been out all the way back at the 32 and a half. I thought he was closer to the 28 on the other angles. Yeah, that's about the 32 and a half. That's a big difference. A great look from our crew, led by our producer Kimani Morales, director Jim Cornell here tonight. Good job by the replay official Richard Brown as well to spot that, you know, during live action that the spot might have been off. The Air Force, you know, Ross, we haven't talked about it too much here tonight, but this roster. I mean, so much different than what it would have been before the pandemic. Uh, similar to the Ivy League, and you're someone who could certainly speak to this, turn back, and at the Air Force Academy, you only get eight semesters, and numerous players given the choice, hey, you skip one semester, you get one at the back end, and you could play 12 games versus, this is game number five, you have Army. We'll see if there's anything beyond that. So that's affected this roster and what Troy Calhoun and his staff have done, really, since the beginning of camp back in September. After further review, the ball carrier stepped out of bounds at the 32-yard line. It will be first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Will the clock operator please put 8.04 on the clock? 8.04. Now moving back nine yards as he was originally spotted out at the 23. Well, you're right at about the turn back. Air Force had 38 players take turn backs. I know my alma mater, Princeton, the entire senior class, or at least 17 of them, did the same thing, where they are out of school for a semester doing internships and stuff because they want their final semester to be next fall so they can play a full season. Roberts pushing the pile, pushing a couple of tacklers. He's finally taken down from behind. Gets to the 25-yard line, picked up seven after it looked like he may have gained only two or three. Henninger was the one who finally brought him down. He, he just keeps those legs going. 
And look at the amount of first time starters this year for Air Force, only Army and Navy with more, and obviously that speaks to turnback. Yeah, and that was coming into tonight. They had three more new starters tonight, so I think, at least for right now, they'll, they'd be at 27 with some of the new starters they had tonight, including the right tackle. Second and three. This is Roberts. Runs it to an official that slowed him down. He's at the five. And he's finally taken down. Unfortunate spot <laughs> for the official, and Roberts may have broke free for the touchdown. That's why the NFL doesn't have the umpire over there anymore. Watch this. Cuts it back. Nothing but down. Oh! <laughs> Good job by the umpire. Then you get the umpire gets hit in the back. It's a rough down. Look out. They're coming right at you. He tried to get out of the way. Wasn't able to. Slowed down Roberts just enough so that the Utah State defenders could make the play. That's Mark Warner, the umpire. That's got to be a bad feeling, by the way. Mark, not the way we wanted to mention you. Nonetheless, part of this officiating crew here tonight. A flag on the play. Thrown from the backside. First and goal for the five will await the penalty. It was the umpire. It was Mark Warner who threw the flag. <laughs> I think he was mad about getting hit twice on the play before and thought, I'm throwing the flag on somebody on this next play. That Air Force kid cutting it back got me a couple bruises I'm going to be feeling tomorrow. Chop block, number 64 and 66 of the offense. 15-yard penalty, replay first down. That's Kreps, the right guard for the second time, Ross, call for the chop block. Yeah, so a chop block is a high-low. When one guy's high and the other guy's low, That looked more like a chop block to me because Norin and the left guard, the center, Norin and the left guard, Laufenberg, were both high, and Krebs just came in blatantly from the side, did not get his helmet in front. Daniels, the pitch, Rimsburg stays on his feet. And back to where they began, right around the five yard line, second and goal. Coming up for an Air Force first time in the red zone. Let's take a look. It's brought to you by Verizon at some of the numbers for the Falcons. Pretty darn good as you would imagine. And they're having success right now with the fullback. Azik Daniels hasn't had to carry it himself that much. But given this success they've had with the pitch guy, I, I see no reason why they don't go ahead and run the option and pitch it to Remsburg and let the senior get a touchdown in his last Mountain West game. For the five again. Here he is. Rimsburg close to the goal line. They'll spot him just short. Third goal for the doorstep coming up for Air Force. They went with the counter instead. You'll see the right guard and right tackle. They're going to pull. Remsburg gets up in there. Watch the ball. Ooh, close, but a good job by the officials again. He was short. That is a good job. Coming back from the leg injury tonight. They're still missing Timothy Jackson, one of their other star backs. Rimsburg, 21-yard touchdown run. They got the power fullback in there, Merla. Scored the first quarter. Merla standing up is in. And it's a touchdown for Air Force. Matthew Merla, his fourth touchdown this season. Joins the scoring party, and the Falcons with a 20-point edge here in Logan. Just fullback belly to the left side behind that all-conference. Look at that double team knocking people back, and that's pretty easy right there for Air Force. The senior from Baton Rouge, son of a former LSU Tiger. Father Mike played inside linebacker at LSU. Play clock's at three as they get ready for the point after try. They need to reset the play clock. Oh, did not get it off in time. Now Mike Catone's been a little more busy here in the third quarter compared to the first half. Delay a game. Delay a game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Retry. 
Now the push. Tevi shoots Pell's roll back a couple of more yards. He's been perfect. 13 to 13 on extra points, including tonight. You know, it's interesting. I can see the back judge was given the raise the roof with one hand signal to reset the play clock. I think the Air Force players and coaches saw that as well. Five yards back. The kick good. is through, and we have another flag. This game's getting sloppy, man. <laughs> really sloppy last couple minutes here. Offside on the defense. That yep, penalty would be declined. Try is good. All about the backs for Air Force on that last drive. And it ends with this. Matthew Merla from a yard out. Air Force in command. 28 to 7. Merla latest touchdown for Air Force. 28 to 7 lead here at Utah State. Ed Cohen, Ross Tucker, and our CBS Sports Network crew. For touchdown for the Falcons fullback. And Ross, the addition of Rimsburg once again, paying dividends. Number of options at Troy Calhoun's disposal here tonight. 28 unanswered by Air Force after Utah State had that awesome first drive. We'll see how Utah State reacts to the adversity they've been dealt. It's been a rough year for them. It's been a rough game since the opening. Gentry across the 30-yard line. And four Falcons finally drag him to the turf. Well, only nine of them. NFL Sunday doubleheader coming your way on CBS. Browns and the Titans at 1 Eastern. Highlights the early slate and then the game of the week, Eagles and the Packers in the late game. Patriots will be out in Los Angeles against Chargers. Top five quarterbacks in the 2020 draft. You know about Joe Burrow and Tua Tagovailoa, but how about Jordan Love? Utah State drafted 26 by the Packers. I don't think he's going to be playing anytime soon the way Aaron Rodgers is playing. Gentry. Big kick. Applied around the 40-yard line. Well, Aaron Rodgers knew what it was like to sit and wait a couple of extra years. Jordan Love will have to do the same out in Green Bay. Like the hit there by Jaden Goodwin. Freshman free safety for Air Force. Laying the wood there. 6'1", 175. So impressed anytime you see a freshman in college football, especially at one of the academies. Second down and three. Andrew Peasley. Give it to Gentry. Gentry fighting for an extra yard. They'll bring a third and short coming up here for Utah State. Did pick up their first win last week. Ended a five-game losing streak. And Frank Miley, such a celebration on the sideline after they came back to beat New Mexico. He was just so excited for his kids to get back in the win column. Oh, can you imagine? I mean, hadn't won a game yet this year. The head coach had been fired. The starting quarterback dismissed from the team. Five starters enter the transfer portal. It was fun watching the coaching tape of that game and seeing the excitement level on the Utah State sideline. These kids are all in. Gentry, short of it, held up. Taken down, ball loose. Was it stolen away by Air Force? They're saying it was. The officials saying otherwise. Really is that Gentry was down. Will bring up a fourth and short. Let's take another look. You got to go for it here if you're Utah State. Gentry, and they blew the whistle there. I mean, they'll eventually rip it out, but they had already blown the whistle. His forward progress was stopped. That's not reviewable. I'm surprised they're punting it here. I, I don't like this decision at all. But if you're trying to win the game, you can't punt the ball here. Fourth and inches from the 44, you're down 28-7. You got to go. Hey, hey, hey. 
Let's see, did Troy Calhoun take the timeout there? He might have taken a timeout to try to give the replay officials more time to consider taking a look at it. But you can't take a look at it. They blew the whistle dead and forward progress was stopped. Troy Calhoun is 14th year leading his alma mater, the Academy. It's a timeout. Punt unit was on fourth and inches here for Utah State. We'll see if they reconsider. Here in Logan, Utah, Air Force, 28 straight points up on Utah State. Only nine days to go in the countdown to America's game. Army-Navy game presented by USAA. December 12th on CBS Sports. Ross, you'll be there. It's going to be much different this year on campus. I cannot wait for that game at West Point. I'll be up at West Point the next couple weekends for that game and then the Air Force game on CBS Sports. Then we're going to be able to be in the CBS Sports Network booth for that. I'm very surprised they're punting here. Good spot for a fake. Wow. Native of Melbourne, Australia. Constantly. This is taken a few yards by Peterson out across the 15 yard line with 218 left here in the third quarter. And the Air Force offense led by Mazik Daniels will take the field once again. So I said it last drive, I'll say it again. I would expect heavy dose of run here from Air Force. You know, now you want to close this game out, you want to keep the clock running. You don't want to suffer any more injuries before the Army game where you have a huge opportunity to win the Commander-in-Chief trophy. I'll start this drive for the 17th. The pitch, Rimsburg, dragged down, was tracked down by Henninger, middle linebacker. So it appears as if that's Utah State's plan is that the linebacker to that side is supposed to get the quarterback to pitch and then go down the line. You see the leading rushers so far. Most of those yards for Remsburg have been as the pitch man as Utah State has not had a very good plan for how to stop the pitch man when they run option. You talk about the various guys who they utilize. Stoner with three carries. He's over 10 carries for the season now. They have 10 guys who rushed the ball at least 10 times this year. Daniels another big shoulder as he's taken down by James Hansen, the sophomore defensive lineman for Utah State. But still move the sticks as Daniels picked up the first down. Just quarterback zone to the left side there. The thing I think is interesting about Hazik Daniels is he's from Franklin, New Jersey. You know, I mean, he's less than a two hour drive from both West Point and Annapolis and went all the way out to Colorado <laughs> Springs. I'm sure they recruited him. Maybe he just wanted to try the mountain time zone or get out west a little bit. Keeps it, pitches, Rimsburg. Edinger spins it down and gets a little help. Could have been a late hit from Justice Tae. And now the flag comes in well after Roberts had been stopped. So I disagree with this because the whistle had not blown. They had not blown the whistle. I don't think Remsburg was actually down on the ground. He was in the grasp. I think that's what they're talking about right now. If the whistle hasn't blown, and I thought Remsburg was still on top of one of the Utah State defenders, you're always taught ever since Pop Warner to play until the whistle blows. Now the crew's been a little more busy here in the third quarter after a relatively clean first half from both sides. A lot of conversations. I'm not exactly sure. I think they're trying to get it right. We'll see. I mentioned Daniels. We'll talk a little more about his story from New Jersey after the call from Mike Catone. Let's see. After further discussion, there is no foul on the play. There you go. Second down. That's a good job. 
That's a good job by the officials. Excellent job. The whistle had not blown, and he was not down. That is really well done by the officials. I don't think it needed to be that long of a conversation, <laughs> but they got it right. You like to see that. Now, clock continues to run. 38 seconds left here in the third. Now, second and six. Up the middle. And Henniger. Last line of defense there to bring down Roberts. So this is kind of what we expected in an Air Force game. Now, Frank Miley told us, Ross, before the game, you know, I love playing them, you know, exactly where you stand because of that toughness that they bring, especially when they run the ball. Yeah, the interesting thing is they've done a good job with the physicality on the fullback and in the middle of the field. It's been just the lack of discipline and responsibility on the pitch guy that's been the issue. Through three in Logan. 5,000 plus fans here. Air Force hurtling over the Aggies. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network presented by Geico.